What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to create secure SQL statements when working with SQLite 3 in Python in order to prevent SQL injection. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to start by creating a simple database and filling it up with some sample values so that we have something to work with. And then we're going to take a look at what problems can arise when working with that database. For example, when we allow user input to influence a query, this can lead to a so-called SQL injection. And we're going to take a look at that and also how to prevent it using so-called prepared statements. So let's get started by importing SQLite 3, which is part of the core Python stack and connecting to the database. So we're going to create this connection here and we're going to say, sqlite3.connect. Now, sqlite3 is a file database. So when we connect, we're actually connecting to a file, we're opening up a file. And if the file does not exist, it's going to be created. So if I say here, um, people.db, this is going to be the name of the database. If I say sqlite3 connect people db, this is going to create the file because it does not exist in the directory right now. And if I run the script, you can see that the people database was created and now we can use it. We can connect to it again and it's going to be the same file. We're not going to overwrite it all the time. So if it exists, it opens the file. Otherwise, it just creates the file. So that's that. Then we also need a cursor. The cursor is what is going to allow us to execute statements. So we're going to say cursor equals connection dot cursor like this. And then we're going to um, create a simple create statement, right? So we're going to say cursor dot execute and we're going to say here in a multi line string create table people and we're going to say now we have a name this is going to be a var char of 255 not null then we want to have a job and the job is also going to be a var char not null then we want to have a password also a var char not null then we want to have an H, which is an integer and we want to have a gender which should be a character of size one then a semicolon and then we close the string so just creating a simple people table um, and I think we should be able to inspect the database uh, by just connecting to it there you go we have the people database we have four columns name job age gender I hope you can see that um, and I hope my camera is not blocking it, but you can see name, job, age, gender, four columns in the people table and this worked. So let's go ahead now and also insert some sample values so that we have something to work with cursor dot execute. And we're going to say now insert into people name, job, age, gender, uh, actually name, job, password h gender we want to insert the values and then in a new line we say uh, let's say Mike he's a programmer he has an h45 I forgot the password again let's say his password is my pass one two three and then we have the h45 and then we have uh, gender being M for male. So let's copy this now and change the values a little bit. Let's say we have, I don't know, Anna, we have Bob, we have uh, Sam, <clears throat> and we have Max. Now uh, we have accountant, accountant, um, doctor <clears throat> and cook. There you go. And now let's change the passwords to my secret pass. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hello world. And you will never know eight, eight, nine. Then let's change the ages a little bit. Let's say we have 40 and 29 and 28 and 32. And then we have here female, male, 
male and female. There you go. Semicolon. And this is the data that we're going to work with. So let's run this. Of course, this table already exists. So we're going to say here in the beginning, cursor dot execute drop table. If exists people. And then if I run this, if I open up the database, can we somehow see the entries? I'm not sure. Can I just say select everything from people. Does this work? Can I do that? I can. But we don't have Oh, because of course, in order to have the data, I think we need to commit. So we need to commit the connection con dot commit. And I think then we should be able to see the data in the database. Let's see. Let's run this. There you go. So now we have the values in the database and we can work with those values now. So what could be a problem with a select statement now? So let's say for example, um, first of all, let's go with a simple SQL statement without any fancy injections or something. Let's just say we want to say cursor execute and we want to have the simple query of select everything from people where H is greater than 30. And what we do then is we get from the cursor the results. So we say the rows that apply or the rows that this statement returns are going to be equal to cursor dot fetch all. And then for row in rows, we can print the individual rows. Right, so here we get all the entries that have an age greater than 30. We have 29 and 28 as well. Those are not listed. Um, so this is how you do a simple SQL statement. Now, let's say we want to have this a little bit more dynamic. Let's say we want to keep this part the same, but we want to allow the user to input the age. Let's say we want to have age input uh, is going to be equal to enter an age. And then we're going to say select everything from people where H is greater than whatever the H input was. So H input, and this has to be an F string, of course. There you go. So this basically replaces the number, the constant number by whatever the user inputs here as an H. So if I do something like 20, you can see it works for all of them. If I say 28, uh, we get all but the person that is 28 years old. If I say 40, we should only get one. And if I say 39, we should get two. So you can see this works. What's the problem now? Now, I'm sure a lot of you know already. The problem here is that this can be used uh, for an SQL injection. So let's just go ahead and do something um, along the lines of, I don't know, 30 or let's do something like 50, which gives us zero results. But let's say we have 50 or and then I can say one equals one. There you go. I get all the results, which means that I can influence the structure of the SQL query. And if the database, which in this case, I think is not the case, if the database allows for multiple statements in the uh, in the in the connection, I can even execute full statements. So for example, I could say something like 30 semicolon and then drop table, uh, I don't know, secret, or something like that. In this case, this does not work because it says you can only execute one statement at a time. But if the database allows it, this can be a problem. So what can we do against this? Or first of all, before we talk about what can we do against this? Let's look at an example that's actually problematic. So let's say for example, uh, someone that's inexperienced with programming wants to use this here, this database as a login, uh, as a login basis. And uh, he does it the following way. He says name input is going to be equal to input. What is your login name? And then we're going to have pass input. What is your password? And then what we do is we say, okay, cursor execute, get all. So select all from people where the name is equal to in these single quotation marks here, the name input and the password 
is equal to quotation marks. Oh, actually not password, pass input, sorry. Or no, actually password was correct, sorry. Password is equal to whatever pass input was. And if such a query exists, if, if such a thing exists, then we're going to be able to uh, enter the database. So that is that. Uh, let's go ahead and say rows. Actually, let's copy this from up here. And let's see if that works. So if I say, for example, I don't know, something that does not exist, we're going to get zero. If I say something like, what do we have here, uh, Mike, and I say the password is something else, I still get zero. If I say Mike, and then I say my pass one, two, three, you can see that I get the respective entry. So I can use this as uh, a login. I can say something like if, um, or actually, I don't need to do it like this. I can say if the length of the rows that we get here is equal to zero, we can print login failed. Else, we can print success. Here is the information of and then name input as an F string. And then we can say, okay, for row in rows, print row, something like this. And the problem here is now, again, I can do it, I can say Mike, oh, I'm in the code, I can say Mike, my pass one, two, three, and I get the information. Um, and if I type something else, I get login failed. But the problem is, again, I influence the structure of the SQL query, because all I have here is a string, I can change the string, however I want. Uh, no one limits me here to just using a name or using a password, I can use SQL code to change the structure of the query. So let's take this query here and imagine how could we or think about it, how can we change that query to just do something that we probably shouldn't do in this script. So it says select everything from people where name equals here, I can input something. Um, and then I have and password is equal to whatever. So here I can just input the ordinary name here, I can do something like Mike, if I want to have Mike's information. And here now I can just say, okay, password has to be equal to, and I can basically just provide an empty string here. Um, and then I can say or and I can say then a condition that's always true, like one equals one. The problem is, however, that this time I have an extra. So so think about it. All I can do here is input something in between these single quotations. So I cannot go outside of those single quotations, I will always have this to my right. So I cannot just do something like uh, in here, do something like uh, empty and then or one equals one, because that's still part of the quotation. What I can do, however, if I'm a bit smarter is I can just say, okay, I'm going to use single quotations myself to say, okay, password is this, then I still have this, um, this single quotation here. But I can say, okay, single quotation, or and then single quotation one equals single quotation one. So the last single quotation is already there. And this is essentially what I type this year, okay, not this this section here is what I type. And then I'm going to be able to manipulate the query. So let's take a look if that works. So I can say Mike, is the Vim mode active in the console command. Let me just rerun this here. Mike, and then I can say, okay, this or one equals whatever. Okay, no, this didn't work. Let me check this again or one equals one. Actually, let me just briefly let me just do it like this. Uh, Mike, and then this or this equals this. There you go. So now we we cracked it, I think it was because of the spaces or because of some other minor mistakes. But we don't just get Mike's information right now, we get all the information. Now this is of course, because here I say four row in rows, and I print all of them. Um, all of of the of the entries where this uh, condition is true. And this condition will always be true, because one is equal to one. 
so I get the data for all these um, all these people in the database, which is a problem, of course, because I, as an as a user, should not be able to influence the structure of the SQL query. I should be able to influence the values that are being used. I should be able to uh, to influence the name and the password and all that, but I should not be able to change fundamentally the structure of the statement. And this is what we're now going to fix. We're going to fix this by using so-called prepared statements instead of just uh, using string construction here because strings, yeah, you need to validate the input. You need to think about all the use cases. With prepared statements, you have the structure predefined and you can just input the values. So how do we do prepared statements? Quite easily. So basically most of it stays the same. We just change the query to the following thing. Select everything from uh, people where name equals and now we add a question mark and the question mark is a placeholder that says this is a value that is going to be used for name. So I can enter something like select drop table whatever it's not going to be used as that because this is a value the structure is fixed already we're looking for a value for name this is not a string that we just uh, enter something into this is a value so it's going to be sanitized um, and then I can do the same thing for password equals question mark. And then afterwards, I can just say name input and pass input as a tuple here. So when I run this, I can do it again. Mike, my pass one, two, three, this works. Then Mike, okay, now I have the BIM mode active again, Mike, and then something else doesn't work. And now let's try again. Mike, and then this or this equals this login failed. So it doesn't work also with an SQL injection. Um, it it uh, has this predefined structure. So we cannot just go ahead and do something stupid. Now, is this 100% uh, is this 100% secure and safe? Not necessarily because you never know if there is some vulnerability somewhere, but this is at least a basic protection. You always want to use prepared statements. You don't want to ever craft SQL statements based on user input by using string concatenation or formatted strings or anything like that. You always want to have the structure already there like this. So this structure will not change. It will be a select statement from people where the name is a value and the password is a value. And the values are in the control of the user, but the values cannot manipulate the structure of the SQL statement. So that is the idea of a prepared statement. And this is how you do secure SQL queries. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.